Welcome to Capillaris Ultimate Talk TV. Be inspired, informed, and elevate your mind one step at a time. Talking about life, real estate, business, and beyond. Your host, author, speaker, real estate broker, Carmela Zita Capillaris. Thank you and welcome to Capillaris Talk TV. We have a great show for you today and an amazing guest. He is an author, speaker, and business mentor. He has trained and coached tens of thousands of business people worldwide, an expert in his field, Mr. Richard Robbins. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much <laughs> for having me. It's a real pleasure. Well, I wanted to ask you, okay, you have been voted one of the most influential real estate people among my peers. Mm -hmm. What is your background and how did you get to where you are today? Well, first of all, thank you for saying that. <laughs> Must have been my mother voting. But, <laughs> um, basically, I started selling real estate when I was 24 years old in Peterborough. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was 27, I moved up to Markham Unionville, where I still live today, and I opened a real estate company. And I had that up to 1996. Um, we struggled for a number of years, but figured it out and became successful eventually. And I sold that. And then I started Richard Robbins International. And really with the purpose of taking what I saw the most productive agents doing and starting to teach it. Because we used to do that in our brokerage. We used to do a lot of training, used to do a lot of coaching. And we, our agents were sort of very productive. Actually, they were three times the market average. And so what I want to do is take those teachings that I was using with a smaller group in my office and take it to a much larger audience. And that's mm -hmm. sort of how the whole thing happened. Wow. Yeah. Well, you've been doing this for almost 20 years, right? Yes. Yeah, You're the CEO and co-founder of Richard mm -hmm. Robbins International. As you know, there's many trainers out there today. Mm -hmm. How does an agent choose a coach? Yeah. And what makes you different and better than other coaches uh, and trainers? Well, it's a really good question mm -hmm. because you're right. There's all kinds of training. There's all kinds of coaching available. And you've got, you know, say you've got some people that uh, they just do all the coaching themselves. They're, they're smaller and they work with everybody themselves. Uh, then you've got national and international companies, you know, more like ours that uh, what we do is we're a little larger in terms of what it is we do. And I think what you've got to do is you've got to find a company that you believe in their philosophy. And a lot of our coaching members come mm -hmm. from attending our multi-day events. So mm -hmm. I do a couple multi-day events. So people come to the multi-day event, and at the multi-day event, they learn all the best practices. They get to see us as an organization. They get to see what we believe in. Mm -hmm. And then if they align with our philosophies, with our teachings, mm -hmm. then they quickly discover that, hey, this company's for me. And I think the big thing, too, is it's all, they're all a little different because, you know, there's, there's some companies, I said, the, the, the coach does all the coaching. Mm -hmm. And then you've got other companies that they will maybe hire coaches that are just uh, maybe out of college or out of, out of school, and they teach them one system. Mm -hmm. What we do, which probably is our greatest differentiator, is we hire uh, real estate agents that are already experienced, and then we train them as coaches. So number one, all of our coaches have a lot of real estate experience, so That's they great. get the deal. Then they're trained within our organization actually to become a coach. And then our objective is not to teach every agent the same thing. Our objective is to find out what your agenda is and help you build the business that you want to build right. that will completely serve the life that you want to live. So we're a little different in that fashion. So we might work with people building a team or work yes. with a new agent that just wants to get started. But our goal is to help you with your agenda, not necessarily our agenda. Wow, that's wonderful. <coughs> and uh, I think you're, you're really strong on building referrals. Yes. And that's one of uh, your key component of your organization. Is that right? Yeah, 100%. That's where, that is the foundation of your business. So if we look at real estate as a whole, the number one challenge real estate agents have is a generation of leads. Mm -hmm. Like, let's face it, most people can service business. They can show property. They can get a listing sold, especially in this market, in, in say, the GTA. Yeah. Uh, that's not going to be the problem. The problem is a generation of leads. So then you say, okay, well, what is the best way to generate leads? Well, everything being equal. I believe that a potential buyer or seller is going to deal with somebody they like, know, and trust, everything right. being equal. So then, what is the easiest client to deal with? Well, somebody you already know or mm -hmm. somebody has been referred to you from somebody you know where there's already a relationship. And that relationship is going to be much easier to nurture okay, right. and help them than, say, you just meet somebody at an open house and now you have to 
get them to know you, that's going to take a little bit longer. So we believe that's where your foundation starts. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't do the others. You should. Yes. Yes. But the foundation of your business should start there, and then you build it from there. Right. Um, you talk about double your doubling your database referral mm -hmm. and about a concept called SLA. Right. What is that? Is that the service level agreement? No, it's not. What it is is, first of all, when I say double your referrals, my theory is this. My theory is that, and I've always been into numbers a little bit, right? And let's face it, a lot of real estate agents, they don't love the whole number side of the business. They just want to mm -hmm. be with people, right? They're good with people and they're good mm -hmm. at selling. But my theory is this. If you have 100 people you know, so let's say you've got 100 people in your database, as an example. Mm -hmm. Well, those 100 people, if you could service them in a way that 20% of that number will turn into transactions, that's pretty cool, yeah. right? So you get 100 people, it's going to turn into 20 transactions. Mm -hmm. If agents look at their business right now, what I suggest they do is say, okay, how many people do I have in my database? Mm -hmm. And then of the people in my database, what percentage of that is turning into transactions, either through repeat business or referral business? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And if it's not 20%, then there's more you could do because what we do is we work with clients and we're getting them 20%. I got an email I read in the parking lot from a client that just went through his numbers from last year and he got a 21% return on 250 people in his database. So, of course, that's over 50 transactions a year. Mm -hmm. That's a big mm -hmm. number. So when I say double the referrals, I say I want you to look at that number and figure out where are you right now. Mm -hmm. And if you're at 10%, 8%, 5%, then you want to implement a system and we teach the lifetime referral system where you can get that up to 20%. The SLA is this. When you go out into the world, whether it's real estate or any other business, and you're, you're a service provider, if you will, because a real estate agent is a service provider. Right. My theory is that a lot of people are going out into the world and they're trying to satisfy their clients. And I'm not convinced that's what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. Because if you satisfy a client, does that mean for sure they're going to do business with you again? The answer is no. Because that's interesting. many times you've done a great job, you've satisfied a client. Yeah. You probably didn't stay in touch properly, and five or ten years later, somebody else's sign goes on their lawn. And you drive by yes. and you go, what happened? Like, mm -hmm. well, I worked really hard for those people. Mm -hmm. So then the, that's the S. The L stands for loyalty. Loyalty suggests that if somebody is loyal, they will do business with you again. That's what loyalty is. Mm -hmm. But does that mean they'll refer business? Will they tell all of their friends and relatives that they should be dealing with you? And the answer is no. Loyalty means Why they'll deal that? with you because loyalty says he'll deal with you, but it doesn't mean they'll refer you because referring business to somebody is risky, right? And if I'm going to take a stand for you, i got to really believe in you. Right. So that's the A. So S, satisfy, L, loyal. The A is advocacy. The secret to having more referral business is to build advocacy with your clients, and that means that your clients will take a stand for you, and they will try to convince other people to deal with you or call you and tell you about other people that are thinking you're buying real estate. So mm -hmm. our goal is to help you create advocacy with your database of clients. Right. And um, I believe the best way to create ad advocacy is through uh, giving your customers value. Mm -hmm. And um, I think one of the main things, and you discuss this in your book, is to mm -hmm. deliver the unexpected. Right. And uh, can you expand on that and tell us what are the other values that you can offer your customers? Right. If you have a database of people, well, first of all, you want to make sure this database, you know these people, and mm -hmm. you know they would probably do business with you. So it's just not about a database that you would just email all of the time. That's not it at all. Yeah. And so when I say deliver the unexpected, and when I wrote the book, the whole theory behind the book was that you know I think one of the myths is to deliver more of what people expect, and that's going to give you a high level of service or a mm -hmm. high level of business. But I think you got to deliver the unexpected, right? Right. And Every great experience I've ever had has been unexpected mm -hmm. okay, from, a, from a customer standpoint. So you can imagine this. Imagine if you've got a database of 100 people or 200 people or 300 people or 50 people. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And let's say month of February, winter, you're in Canada, and you decide to rent a rink for an hour and invite all your clients to a mm -hmm. skating party. That's nice. That's unexpected, isn't it? Exactly. They'd come and they go, wow, you're there to greet everybody and have a good time and invite them to bring their friends and neighbors right. and everybody else. Yes. Now you're meeting all of these people you don't know. Yeah, what a great do community way. Community events. Community events. What yeah, a great that's way one thing we're big on too, community events. Right. Yeah. So delivering the unexpected. Expected. Right. Or maybe what you do is you call them in the spring and say, you know, right now I'm doing free market analysis uh, for my customers. Would exactly. you like to know what your home is worth? 
unexpected. Yes. You know, so all these little touches are things that your customers would not expect, but right. that have tremendous value to them. So you're not bugging them, exactly. you're bringing value to their life. Exactly. So that's what I talk about when I say deliver the unexpected. It's like birthday cards or thank you notes or now, taking it further than that would be. See, and you're right. However, birthday cards could be expected. Mm -hmm. Calendar at the end of the year could be expected. Exactly. Right? Now, should you still do it? Of course, I'm not of suggesting course. that. But I am suggesting you might want to get more creative in your approach. It's like this. You can either try to do things better or do things different. And yes. I believe that different is better than better. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. Even through your open houses, I think you can create <coughs> themes and make them different and better. Yeah. Right. Maybe, you know, in the summer, uh, have a hot dog stand or something like right. that. Or, yeah, just offer people wine and cheese. Well, that's one that's common. But there's right. a lot of different things that you can you can do, mm -hmm. uh, which will bring value. Maybe incorporate uh, the new restaurant that opened and serve their samplings at your open house, there things like go. that. So I get it. I read your book, obviously. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and I wanted to say that it's unlike any other sales book that I've read. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more than a how-to book. Mm -hmm. It offers a lot of insight and um, a lot of information. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more told like a like a story. Mm -hmm. One thing that was really interesting was you talk about the seven myths of real estate. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what those seven myths of real estate are and uh, yeah. give well, us a there's synopsis? There, yeah, there's, there's what I was doing. Here's what I wrote the book. My thinking was this. You got the real estate industry, which is a massive, massive industry. You got like 40,000 agents here in the GTA. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a very large industry. Um, you know, the whole economy is affected by real estate. And because I've been in the business for 30 years, training for almost 20 years, mm -hmm. there's certain things that great agents do yeah. that the other agents are not doing as well. Right. And I believe that a lot of people buy into what I would consider untruths. And that's where I said the myth. Okay? Mm -hmm. So an example of one would be this. A lot of people think that failure is the opposite of success. Right? So the myth is yeah. failure is the opposite of success. And I don't believe that. I think failure is a path to success. Very so, good. So you look at it and you say, well, in the real estate industry or any sales industry, let's face it, the more no's I get, the more yeses I'm going to get. So I've got to have more failures. Plus, I'm going to learn from all of my failures. Like, mm -hmm. the person that have never failed has really never done anything, right? Yes. And then there's, like, the That's abundance That's one of myth. my favorite, the failure ma uh, myth. Yeah. The abundance it, myth. I believe we've got to go, like, I say to agents all the time, instead of counting your yeses, start counting your no's. Yes. Right? And the more right. no's you get, the more yeses you're going to get, and every no is getting you closer to a yes. That's just, in, in any business, it's the same thing. And plus, some people never even try because they're afraid of failing. Sure. And failing is what leads to success, which is right. what you're saying. So That's if you're just right. always afraid of trying something because you're going to fail or mm -hmm. unless you know how to do it exactly right, you're never going to get anywhere. Right. Is that I true? I always say, yeah, yeah, I say fail fast and fail well. <laughs> right? Like, just don't go down. Don't stay down very long. Get back up and another failure, right? And, and like, we keep moving along that path. And I think we both know we're not, we're not telling people to, to try to purposely fail. What we're saying is an attempt, yes. right? Give it a shot, right? Yeah. And you're right. Fear is the, uh, you know, fear is that emotion that I think holds most people back from achieving their dreams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess people have to read the rest of the book to find out what the other myths are. Yeah. You have to get the book. It's excellent. Um, you've been in the uh, real estate business for many years in mm. one capacity or another. Right. How do you feel that the real estate market has evolved over the years? Mm -hmm. You want to know something that's interesting because a lot of people, they say, hey, Rich, the real estate industry has changed. It has. Uh, we've got transparency today. We've got, you know, with the internet, access to information today that we've never had before. Consumers generally today are going to start their search on the internet. Right. The good old days, they used to start their search by phoning a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. So real estate agents at one time were what I called the gatekeepers of information. If the consumer wanted anything, they had to come to us. No longer the case, right? So I think the evolution is a really cool evolution. I know some people will debate me on this. However, I think what it does, it holds us all to a higher standard. Mm -hmm. So if you think about transparency, transparency means you can't get away with not being good or mm -hmm. you won't last. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yes. I like where you got to raise the standards. And be authentic. And be authentic and be good at what you do. Right. right? That is now our be responsibility. Real. Be real. In terms of the information, 
if you look at it, you say, okay, the consumer has access to all this information. However, I think what it's done to some degree is it's given the consumer false confidence, if you will. Yeah. Like they think they know more exactly. than they probably do. And maybe I'll, I'll tell you a really cool story that just happened this weekend. Okay. My daughter decided she wanted to look for a condo, okay? Yes. Now, listen, I know thousands and thousands and thousands of real estate agents. So she goes on online, finds all the condos, because I starts driving around, walks into some, you know, new buildings and looks at, you know, show places and everything else. Well, she comes home all excited. She goes, Dad, 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 I found this one and I think I should buy it. And I'm going, whoa, 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 just slow down a little bit, right? Yeah. And she said, well, it's perfect and it might sell. I said, well, believe me, they all tell you that. But <laughs> anyway, I said, you know, just hang in there a little bit. And she goes, what do you mean? I said, well, you, you've just started your look. I said, what you have to do is contact a really good real estate agent right now. So she, who said, I call. And I said, well, here's what I want you to answer. Who do you know that you would trust 100%? that you know would do a really, really good job for you and would completely have your best interest in mind. Mm -hmm. And she named this one person. There's who you call. So she called that person. She gets on the phone with that person okay. and the person called her back and said, okay, well, that's really good. Well, we can get you back to that condo. However, you said there was only two units left. Is that right? And she said, that's right. Uh -oh. He said, well, why has nobody else already bought one of those two units? Mm -hmm. So they've been picked over, which means possibly maybe the location isn't good, the view is not good, you know, maybe it's in a really yeah. low floor, whatever the case is, and it got her thinking. That's what she needed to hear because yes. she doesn't know what he knows. Do you see? Yes. So by, by, it's true. by him having a, a very valuable conversation, right, mm -hmm. with my daughter, mm -hmm. it completely shifted her perspective. Yeah. So that is now the role of the real estate professional is to be an advisor in a way that you can help people see what it is that they don't see mm -hmm. so that they can make better decisions. Mm -hmm. But it's not mm -hmm. about information anymore because my daughter did not eat, need him for that information. Well, that leads us to mm -hmm. something that I found uh, very interesting that you talk about and that's people's blind spot. Mm -hmm. Meaning that some people have the misconception that uh, they put their property on MLS and it's going to sell right away. Mm -hmm. Or they call an agent, get the address and they can find their own property. Mm -hmm. This is what you refer to as the blind spot. How do we identify and deal with it? Right. Because of the internet now, people mm. think they can do everything themselves. So how do we deal with that blind spot? Well, it comes back, I, I think the job of a salesperson, if they're a good salesperson, is not to find a solution, but to find a problem. In other words, what you have to do is you've got to show the consumer, the buyer or seller, right, what their problem is that they didn't know they had. Here's an example. You're working okay. a buyer. You buy our phone job, oh, I saw your listing, want to go see it. You go show them, you say, hey, there's other homes in the area, you want me to, oh, no, 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 we don't want to work with an agent, you know, we're just going on the internet, we drive by them, if we like them, we're going to call the agent. And of course, they think they're going to get a better deal if they deal with a listing agent, which, which is not, it's always not always true, or not very often true, because the agent's working for the seller. Their exactly. fiduciary duties to the seller. Their mm -hmm. job is to get the seller the most amount of money, money for their home. The seller's paying them, right? right? That's the reality of it. So then you say to them, you say, well, do you realize that there's some homes go on the market and, you know, they don't get advertised before they're up and sold because, you know, the realtors have access to the immediate MLS. Mm -hmm. And so the homes you're seeing are the ones that actually been on, on the market for a while and haven't sold, but you're not seeing the ones that sell within 24 hours. You say, to them, right. how would you like to see those? I created a problem the buyer didn't know they had. Right. Right? So I told yeah. the buyer, you might be missing the best homes. Yeah. You might be missing the ones that sell in 24 or 48 hours because they're not advertised. They're you can't find them yet. Mm -hmm. And also the buyer goes, wow, you, I'm looking at the ones that are already been looked over and I'm not seeing the ones that sell in 24 hours or four. That's right. I created a problem the buyer didn't know they had, the blind spot. Right. Now I become the solution. Now I can create a relationship. Right. Just like what that agent did with my daughter. Yes, right. exactly, exactly. Right. It's a matter of talking <coughs> to people and uh, and solving the problem or finding the objective and dealing with it, right? right. Um, what do you think uh, is the single most important thing that the consumer, the general consumer, wants from its real estate agent when buying and selling? Right. They want, I, I believe what they want is they want very trusted advice. Yes. Like, I mean, really trusted advice where, you know, y you understand everything. And that's why I'm such an advocate of being some form of specialist, mm -hmm. not a generalist. Because if you're going to, if you're going to sell somebody a home, should you know yeah. everything about the school districts? 
Should you know everything about that particular area? Should you know exactly. everything about the zoning? Should you know everything about all of the homes that have been bought and sold that area? Uh, should you know anything about possible zoning changes in that area, all of the conveniences in that area? Because that's what most consumers don't know. Right. And now I can have a valuable conversation. It goes back to value. Right. <laughs> because my job as a salesperson is to help people make a decision that is in their best interest. Mm -hmm. That's my job, mm -hmm. right? So I think what they want is they want somebody that they fully can trust that will help them make the right decision. Right, right. For sure, for sure. <coughs> um, we talk about making goals mm -hmm. or having goals. Uh, everybody should have goals in this mm -hmm. business, right? Sure. But in your book you say it's not about having the goals, it's about doing. Mm -hmm. Can you explain why it's about doing and not having? Right. Okay, so there's actually a couple myths that will address that. So I, I'll go to this one first and you might be asking me something different. <laughs> I don't know. So here's my theory. Okay. We, you were just on a holiday, right? Yeah. Which was wonderful, <laughs> I heard. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, when you went on that holiday, you set a goal way back when that you were going to go on a holiday. How, how long did you set it before you actually went? Uh, probably a couple months. A couple months. So 60 days before. So your goal was 60 days before the holiday that you were going to go on a holiday, right? Right. That was your goal. That was in the future. Right. Right? Now, because you knew exactly where you wanted to be, could you then determine everything you needed to do in advance to make that become a reality? Right. You got to book a flight, check out resorts. What are we going to do with the kids? Possibly dogs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who's yeah. going to look after my business? So yes. When but you in said terms of real estate? In terms of business? Yes. It works the same way. Because yes. wouldn't you agree that any goal, right, any goal that you set for yourself, the reason you set the goal is, yes, you want to get there, but more importantly, what you want to do is it allows you to determine what you need to do today to make that become a reality. Because whether it's a financial goal, whether it's a relationship goal, you know, whether it's a goal, you know, going on a holiday, if mm -hmm. you think about it, they all unpack exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And the reason you set a goal is to yeah. determine what it is you need to do today. Exactly. And if you don't know what you want in the future, how can I figure out what I need to do today to make that become a reality? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Now, you might have been talking about being, the state of being. Yes. Right? <laughs> that was my next question. <laughs> right, right. Cause that's yes, uh, because uh, I really love your book and I keep going back to it. In the book, you use three words. Right. You use the words be, do, and have. What right. are the significance of those words? Okay, great. Thank you. Well, first of all, if you look at the word have, I, I can have our goals. I, I, I want to, you know, sell X number of homes, right? Um, yeah. You know, that's your have. Your have is all of the things that you want. And then what you have to do to get all your have is you've got to determine what you're going to do. So remember, now that I know what I want, I can say, okay, I need to do all these things, you know, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, to make that become a reality. That's just planning. Mm -hmm. But then we move it back one more step, and it's called a state of being. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to write down what I want to have. I can determine what I have to do. But here's my big question. Is it possible that two people could do exactly the same things and produce substantially different results? They could, right? So I could send two people, say, on the same listing presentation. Yes. And they could follow exactly the same presentation and produce substantially different results. And the reason is because you've got to build trust. And the only way somebody is going to want to work with me, whether it's get involved in my organization, okay, or buy or sell a house, you know, through, through the great work that you do, is they have to trust me. Yes. Trust is the number one thing in a relationship. And once okay. there is no trust, they will trust not listen to Trust and likability. And likability. Right. Now, how do I get them to trust me? Yes. Trust is based on my intention. Yes. And that's your state of being. Right. So, my intention is internal. My intention. If my intention is to meet with you and sit down and ask you all of the questions necessary so that I can truly understand what it is you're trying to achieve, and then what I'm going to do is provide you with the best possible solutions I can provide you to allow you to get where it is you want to go, mm -hmm. right? You'll trust me because you can feel that my concern is about you. Yes, Intention, that's great. Intention, state of being. If I walk in there and you mm -hmm. can feel that I'm just trying to get your listing or just trying to get you to buy a yeah. house, right? Because, you know, oh, that's good one, buy that one. You know what I mean? Because I'm trying to get the commission. Different intention, would you agree? Okay. Your intention has to be pure. Right. For right. your actions to be trustworthy. Let me get one more question and we're going to wrap it up. Yeah. Um, 
you know, a mindset and a positive mindset and focusing on what's good mm -hmm. is important. Would you say that happiness brings success or is it the other way around? Does success bring happiness? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great question. Well, Just a couple minutes left. <laughs> yeah, it works the other way around. So in other words, if you look at it, there's been studies done on this and Sean Aker's book, he wrote a book, uh, wrote about this and success doesn't lead to happiness. Happiness right. leads to success. That's what I thought. Why? Because people enjoy working with happy people. Right. right? When you have passion, when you're happy, you, you, the success just comes. Sure. And that's how it works. Tell us uh, when your next event is and what you have planned for this year so far and uh, where people can contact you and uh, um, for your coaching and other things. Yeah, thank you. Well, for anything they want to know, they can go to richardrobbins.com. Mm -hmm. and everything is there. Our next event's coming up first week of July in Vancouver and then our other event will be the last week of November. It's going to be right here in Toronto. Um, we've launched a brand new training program it's called RI in Demand. We just launched right. it two weeks ago yes. so this is a, a big deal for us this year. This is sort of our our big focus this year is getting this up and running but yeah, if anybody wants to know any more you can always uh, go to richardrobbins.com uh, call the office, and we'd be glad to uh, talk to you and help you in any way we can. Yeah, I think you have a, an event in uh, Vancouver in July and one in Toronto in November. That's right. And your book, can, uh, they can get it on Amazon.com, yeah, yeah. right? And I, what was the most important lesson your father taught you? My father taught me. He said this to me one day, Rich. He said, you know, the colleague, the greatest man, I said, what's that? He said, when they take on a responsibility, and you know it'll be done. You never have to worry about it again. He used to say that to me all the time. Thank you very much for being here, Richard. It was a pleasure. You shared a wealth of information with us. Thanks so much. Time for a break. When we come back, we'll be speaking to the mayor of Mississauga, Bonnie Crombie.